Hello, and welcome to A Gross of Physics. Today is day 89, and what we're going to do is start our discussion of light. Now, we just finished our waves chapter, so you already know that light is an electromagnetic wave. So light can travel through the vacuum of space. It doesn't need a material in which to travel through. It can travel through the air and through other materials, but it will slow down when it goes into those materials. Sound waves, on the other hand, when they entered more dense materials, traveled faster. And that was because they were mechanical waves and required a medium. So when we had closer proximity to the particles, they would be able to send the wave pattern more rapidly. Light, on the other hand, because it doesn't need a particle in which to vibrate um, through, will actually slow down when it goes into more dense materials. And we're going to be able to figure out quantitatively how different that value is in a few days. But for now, what I'd like to do is start with the basics of light. First things first, light has a value that we know um, definitively today, and that's 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second squared. And that's how fast light travels through the vacuum of space. That being said, we also know how fast sound travels, and that was 331 plus 0.6 T, and T depends on the temperature. So at different temperatures, the sound waves travel differently. Now there's a common example of light and sound uh, corresponding to one another, and that's during thunder and lightning. When lightning strikes, we often wait a number of seconds before we hear the thunder. And as children, we're taught that this can determine how far away the storm is from us. Now there is a value that is definitive for how many seconds to count to to, to determine how many miles away. But every year when I ask my students what they think that value is, it varies. Some students believe it's one second, some others believe it's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, all the way up to ten seconds. So the range of values that I hear are anywhere from one second per mile to ten seconds per mile. Now, I'd like to know what you think, and what we'll do is determine what that value is at the end of this video. What I'll do is I'll take the whiteboard out, we'll do some calculations, and we'll determine definitively what um, the number of seconds are to relate the number of miles away a storm is. And we'll see if you're right. So you might want to jot that down now on your notes, and then we'll compare it at the end of the lesson. Now, knowing the speed of light wasn't something that we always knew. In fact, it was a value that was um, fluid over the years. Light obviously has a specific value, but we as uh, humans didn't know what that value was till fairly recently. Back before the 1600s, um, people believed that light was instantaneous, that as soon as you turned it on, it traveled across the universe or as far as it needed to go immediately. After that, Galileo was the first to deduce that it had a finite speed, but he wasn't able to determine the value. Well, Romer um, was able to find a number that related the speed of light, and he got it to be approximately 2.2 .2 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. A little low but the same order of magnitude that we uh, know the speed of light to be today. Now remember, order of magnitude is the exponent, um, so in this case 10 to the 8 um, of a number. So two numbers that are both in 10 to the 8 would have the same order of magnitude. 10 to the 8 versus 10 to the 6, that would be an order of magnitude away of 2. You'd be off by two orders of magnitude. But more recently, and this is in the early 1900s, we had what, what we now believe to be um, a more precise measurement of the speed of light. 2.2 .2 is close, um, and like I said, it's in the same order of magnitude, but in terms of precision, it wasn't really there. So in 1926, Albert Mickelson was the first to measure the speed of light to a very high um, degree of precision. He also found it to be, it also was quite accurate as well. So Albert Mickelson was the first American to receive the Nobel Prize in Physics, and it was because of his work with the speed of light. And what he did is he measured it in 1926. And he worked on this for most of his career, um, but the value that he got was determined by doing a specific experiment um, using two mountains and mirrors and light. And what he did is we climbed up uh, Mount Wilson and Mount San Antonio, which were approximately 35 kilometers apart. And he set up mirrors on one side and shone light from one mountain to the other and back. 
And what he found is that he could not have a time difference that was enough to measure the speed of light. It happened too quickly for him to get a value that was anything other than zero for time. And that would result in, if you just did V equals D over T, um, the speed of light being infinite. And of course, he knew that that wasn't the case. Romer was able to deduce that it had a finite speed after Galileo uh, to, you know, determined that it should have one. Romer found a value for it. And now um, Mickelson was able to, or was working on getting a more precise value. So what he did is he shone light across the mountains and found that it still went too quickly. So light traveled 70 kilometers or thereabouts in too little time for him to determine um, the actual value of that time. So what he ended up doing is rigging up a mirror that rotated and it had eight faces, so it was an octagonal mirror. And as it rotated, the light would, if it was stationary, hit the mirror, travel across to the other mountain and back, and shine into his eye. And not necessarily where it would damage his eye, it was just into an eyepiece. So he was looking through um, what looked like a little telescope. Well, that was the same situation as shining light and bouncing back, so it found it to be too quick. What he then did is started spinning the mirror, so it started rotating and he was able to change the rotational speed of the mirror, so he knew the frequency of the mirror. Well, what happened was he got to a point where after one-eighth of a turn of the mirror, the light would hit the first face, it would travel across to the other mountain and back, and the mirror would rotate one-eighth of a spin. Knowing that, he was able to figure out how long it took light to travel that far. If you think about it, the frequency would be one-eighth of that value, and you could find the time period by finding the reciprocal of frequency, since frequency and time period are just reciprocals of one another. So ultimately, he painstakingly figured out what frequency the mirror would have to rotate in order to get the light source to be exact. And it would ha he would have to have a steady stream of light going into his eye. If he shone the light and the mirror was spinning too quickly, it would miss his eye. If it was too slowly, it would also miss his eye. So it was only one frequency at which it would hit the hit the mirror, the mirror would rotate one eighth of a spin and it would enter his eye in a continuous stream. Once he was able to do that, he was able to just use velocity equals distance over time in order to determine the speed of light. Now when he did this, he measured the speed of light to be approximately 2.996 times 10 to the 8 meters per second squared. Now that value is just about the same value that we use today. Um, remember, light travels at 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, but that's in the vacuum of space. When light travels through the air, it does slow down. And his precision was a very small percent error compared to the values that we know now. We're able to use um, lasers and able to use much more precise timing devices to measure the speed of light today. But in 1926, Albert Mickelson was able to find the speed of light by shining light from one mountain to another and back using a mirror that rotated um, one eighth of a spin on a rotating um, spindle, kind of like a record player. Ultimately, the Nobel Prize for Physics was awarded to, the Ameri to an American for the first time by using the equation V equals D over T. So sometimes, although an equation may be easy, it's difficult to collect the data. So in this case, it was quite painstaking to collect all this data. He worked on this for most of his career, most of his life, and he worked with other things dealing with light. So Albert Mickelson in 1926 came up with the speed of light to be 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. We use C as the symbol for the speed of light, and it's a lowercase c, and that is going to be what we determine um, if we're looking for a specific value of the speed of light. That's going to be our basic value, our 3 times 10 to the 8, so C represents the speed of light in a vacuum. Um, remember, in a material medium, the speed of light will decrease. And like I said before, we'll be able to calculate that more effectively when we have an equation for it. But for now, just realize that the more optically dense an object is, the slower light will travel. So for today, speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. In 1926, Albert Mickelson determined that uh, and, and used V equals D over T to do so. He was awarded the first Nobel Prize for an American in physics. Now let's go back to that myth that we discussed earlier in the unit, earlier in the video. 
how many seconds do you count um, in between the, the lightning strike and the thunderclap in order to determine how many miles away the storm is? And let's take out the whiteboard and solve that value now so even if you were wrong, from here on out, you know the proper value. Thank you. All right, I'd like to look at the classic debate now as to how many seconds one's supposed to count in between the lightning strike and the thunderclap to determine how far away the storm is. Many of my students um, range from one second is one mile all the way up to 10 seconds is one mile. And what I'd like to do is determine the actual number um, that's needed to count. Now, the way we need to do this is to think about um, what is traveling. In the thunder's case, it's a sound wave traveling from the storm to the observer. For lightning, it's the light that's traveling. So what matters is the speed. So for sound, and of course, the sound wave is going to travel at different speeds depending upon the temperature. And the temperature higher up in the atmosphere is going to be different than at the surface. But what I'd like to do is just use room temperature around 70 degrees Fahrenheit as our base speed. Lightning, well, it's light. So it travels at 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. <clears throat> now, that being said, how far are we looking? Well, our value is for a mile. So the distance is one mile. And it'll travel the same distance. Now, of course, two miles, three miles, four miles, we'll use multiples of our final answer. Now, how far is a mile in meters? You need to remember that it's 1609 meters. And we can simply use V equals D over T to determine how long it will take each of those to travel the mile. 343 equals 1609 meters over T. 3 times 10 to the 8 equals 1609 over T. So let's calculate that. For the sound, we'll do 1609 divided by 343, and we're going to get 4.7 seconds. For light, we're going to do 1609 divided by 3 second E8, and we're going to get... 5.36 times 10 to the negative 6 seconds, which is 0 .00005 0 0 0 0 0 seconds. So we're going to consider that almost instantaneous in terms of a mile. So that's really fast. 4.7 seconds. So when you're counting between the lightning and the thunderclap, there is about five seconds. So the proper number of seconds to count per mile is five seconds. Now you may be wondering about the extra 0.3, but when you're hiding under your, under your um, blankets and you're counting one Mississippi, I don't think precision is your most um, pressing concern. So the number of seconds to count per mile when you're trying to determine how far away a thunderstorm is is five seconds between the lightning strike and the thunderclap.